Hi, I'm George James, Head of Commonwealth here at Stanley Gibbons in London. Uh, and I'm here today to look at some of the best items from our upcoming Revenue and Telegraph auction, uh, which is happening on the 21st of November. It's an early start at 9.30, but once you've seen the video, I'm sure you'll agree that these are lots worth getting up for. The reason that I've always collected revenues and the reason I've always liked revenues myself uh, is that you can tell stories with the stamps and much more so than with postal stamps. And we're here today to look at actually the consequences of this little stamp right here, which is issued for the 1765 Stamp Act uh, in America by the British government. Um, and we're going to tell a story of not only the impact on the American population um, and how it's affected history to this day, but also the uh, consequences of the Seven Years' War on the British government. And you can tell this full story uh, through the medium of all these revenue stamps which are available in the sale. So we'll start with this little one here. Um, and this stamp was issued by the British government for tax on printed paper in the in, well, in what was at the time British America, the 13 colonies. And it was payable in British money to the government in London, but crucially was taxed on the settlers there in America. And that led to the, um, the phrase you'll all have heard before, the no taxation without representation chant. And it actually was, had to be repealed after one year because there were riots, there were, um, the, the actual collectors were sometimes attacked. Um, and it, it basically, the colonists said that unless we get representation in London, you can't tax us. And it actually was one of the first dominoes that fell that led to the Revolutionary War and the War of Independence against Great Britain. Um, so after this war, um, which granted, um, well, led to the Declaration of Independence in America, um, the British had been fighting the French uh, and fighting in Europe as well on almost all fronts for seven years, as you can imagine, and was right on the verge of national bankruptcy. And the parliament at the time needed to raise so much money so quickly just to stave off that national bankruptcy that they had to issue stamps to fund all manner of taxes. So if you're a wealthy person at the time, we're gonna run through all the little things that you were getting taxed on. Uh, so the first one is hat tax. So if you had a, a nice top hat, uh, this is a proof of a stamp which was issued for hat tax. Uh, and the reason we know it's a proof is because these dies were actually printed right onto the silk lining of a hat. So very, very rarely you get these with uh, printed directly onto silk and a few have survived just, you know, literally cut out of top hats. Um, but these are proofs on thick paper uh, and you can see the British crown, the British coat of arms and the rate. Uh, so this is for a hat uh, which would cost more than 12 shillings. Uh, on which two shillings was charged. So uh, if you didn't have a hat uh, which had this printed in it, you were breaking the law. There's a few of these in the sale. They start at around 300 pounds. They're all different rates, sizes of hats, and there's four here. Um, but it wasn't just your hat that got charged. Also, if you, uh, you know, going into winter, going into December, uh, if you had gloves, your gloves would also get taxed. And these are proofs of stamps, which again, were issued to basically collect money from just the simple thing of wearing gloves because they were seen as a luxury item, they were seen as fair game by the government. Uh, so if your gloves cost above 10 pence to purchase uh, here in London, you were taxed two pence. And again, you had to have these printed into the lining uh, of your gloves. And you can imagine it's the 1700s, uh, we're pre, you know, spray deodorant. So people used to use perfumes and a lot of people, well, actually very few people could uh, afford to use perfume. So again, it was regarded as a luxury item. Your perfume was then taxed. Uh, this was only half pence, so it was a bit, it was a bit cheaper to smell nice. But again, we we're only, we only got a hat and gloves on and we're smelling nice. And we've already paid quite a bit of tax for the privilege at the time. Um, the next thing at the time is uh, lovely uh, wealthy people in Edwardian England wore wigs. Uh, and uh, this is, well, not necessarily wigs, they used hair powder to keep their their hair, um, you know, slicked back, uh, looking dashing, uh, and your hair powder was taxed. And actually, this was a, a certificate which lasted for the whole year, um, which proved that uh, you had paid your tax for hair powder. So there's two in the sale. Um, 
so you're getting taxed for your hat and your hair under the hat as well. So um, again, pretty expensive to be British after the Revolutionary War. Also, we're before Uber. Years before Uber were years before taxes. So if you wanted to hire a horse for the day, the government also printed tickets for you to hire a horse. So you were taxed on a horse. So you get these beautiful ornate things. And this is for one horse for one day or less um, to be used within eight miles of the place of letting. So you had to have this um, ticket with you as you were riding your horse around the country uh, to prove that you'd paid the tax. It was called post horse duty because when you passed a, um, a post horse duty collector, um, you had to show this ticket to say, hey, look, I've paid this tax to rent my horse for the day. And then last but no means least, uh, are these beautiful items, uh, which were medicine duty. Now they're all printed roughly in the same way, uh, but these actually, medicine at the time used to be in little pots, uh, little wooden pots with the pills inside. A lot of it was actually quack medicine and didn't really work very much because we're in the early days of science. Uh, so these would be applied around in a circle around these little pots to seal them shut. But again, even your medicine was taxed. So you've got often the, uh, the chemist or the medicine manufacturer on the left of these, um, the, sorry, on the right hand side. So that's Dicey and Co who were in Bow Churchyard. Um, if you were feeling dicey, that's where you needed to go. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's got the, uh, again, the crown and the value on the left. So just with these lots uh, in the sale, um, you can tell the story not only of American independence um, and you know how something so small can lead to such a massive geopolitical change, but you can actually show the massive impact that uh, it had on Great Britain and the lengths they had to go to to avoid national bankruptcy. And this is a little, uh, a little sort of end piece to the story. Uh, because the dyes were so expensive uh, to manufacture, uh, the America dyes are actually reused. They just bought them back and reused them uh, in, in Britain. Um, again, uh, didn't have much money at the time. So actually this is going to be very difficult to see on camera, but this is a, a, just an embossed revenue of the time, but it has the same uh, America heading on it. Um, so even, even after we were sort of kicked out of America and they declared independence, uh, we still were using the America dyes here in England. Um, so there's plenty, of, there's plenty more uh, in terms of British revenues uh, in the sale. Uh, there's also important Southern Rhodesia. Uh, there's wonderful India telegraphs, uh, and it's all online for you to have a look at. Um, and best of luck in the sale.